First of all, salam alaikum to you all, and inshallah uh, we'll have a, a really good time together over these couple of days. Um, and yeah, th this is, a, is, is something that uh, I was asked to to um, give a talk about Futua some time ago, and uh, and um, realised I knew very little about it, technically speaking. So. Um, and, uh, and this is what I eventually came up with. Bismillah. A'udhu billahi min shaitan al-rajim. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina wa mawlana Muhammadin wa alihi wa sahbihi wa ajma'in. Marhaban. Oh yes. Many of the Arabic terms connected to the deen are well known to every Muslim. Many of the Arabic terms connected to the deen are well known to nearly every Muslim. Salat, zakat, saum, wudu, fard, halal, haram, etc. And many more are used by most Muslims on a regular basis. Futua, however, is an Arabic word in far less use than many of these other terms. And a large number of Muslims will not know it at all. And yet in many ways, it is the master key to making Islam meaningful to the Muslims of today. And also for all those others, young and old, who are looking for a meaning to their lives in this increasingly nihilistic age. Non-Muslims as well. Futua is, in fact, absolutely central to the whole purpose of Islam. From one point of view, it can be seen as the whole reason why the Prophet wasalam, was sent to the human race. He himself, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, Innama bu'ithtu li utammima makarim al akhlaq. Kama qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I was only sent in order to perfect noble aspects of character. And this is exactly what the word futua signifies. And remember the famous hadith of Sayyidatna Aisha radiallahu anha, who said when she was asked what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was like, that his character was the Qur'an. In other words, that he totally embodied those good qualities of character praised by Allah Ta'ala in his book. So according to this uh, oops, understanding, what Futuwa involves is simply following the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, not in the usually understood sense of imitating his outward actions, but in taking on those noble qualities of character he so perfectly exemplified during the course of his life. And indeed, the word futuwa is derived from the Quran, coming from the root fa which is used by Allah Ta'ala in his book in a very specific way. It occurs in Surah Al-Anbiya, in reference to Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam, when Allah Ta'ala says, they said, we heard a young man mentioning them, they call him Ibrahim. This comes, this comes in the middle of the passage describing the episode in which the young Ibrahim destro destroys the idols of his people and is then thrown into the fire from which he emerges unscathed. The root fataya is used to describe Ibrahim by calling him fatan translated here as a young man, but indicating by its linguistic root that he is someone who embodies futua. As the context shows, it does not mean just any young man. And the passage makes several aspects of futua very clear. Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam has certain very clear characteristics. First and foremost, he unequivocally affirms the unity of Allah. And this is the basis of everything he does. He is intelligent and knows how and when to act in such a way that his actions will be effective. He is courageous and not afraid to go against the dictates of his society when he knows they are wrong. He is unfailingly courteous in the face of great provocation. And he continues to desire the best for his fellow countrymen despite their hostility towards him. These are the basic characteristics of the people of Futua. Another vital element involved in Futua 
is brought out by the next reference to the root fataya I will look at, which occurs near the beginning of Surat al-Kaf, which uh, Amir Adnan uh, referred to, when Allah Ta'ala says, إِذَا وَالْفِتْيَةُ إِلَى الْكَهْفِ وَقَالُوا رَبَّنَا آتِنَا مِنْ لَدُنْكَ رَحْمَةً وَهَيْءْ لَنَا مِنْ أَمْرِنَا رَشَدًا when the, when, the, when the young men took refuge in the cave and they said, Our Lord, give us mercy directly from you and open the way to write guidance for us in our situation. Here, the root fataya is found in the word al fityatu the plural of fata, translated in this instance as the young men. The young men in this story were in many ways very similar to Sidna Ibrahim a.s in that they were uncompromising in their belief in Allah and in their refusal to join their society's practice of idolatry. However, rather than make hijra as he did, they retired to the cave where Allah Ta'ala preserved them until it was safe to them to come out into the world again once more. The crucial point for us to grasp is that in this case, there were a group of them. Futuwa is not something which happens in isolation. It is a communal phenomenon. It involves a group of like-minded young believers who want something different from the kufr, which is all that is on offer from the society which surrounds them. They confirm and support one another in their determination to find a way of living according to their belief in a world which wants them to take a very different direction. They are people who are following Allah's instruction to us in Surah At-Tawbah when he says, فَدَعَوْذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا تَقُوا اللَّهِ وَكُنْ مَعَ صَادِقِينَ You who have iman, have taqwa of Allah, and be with the people of truth. And in Surah Ali Imran, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَدَعَوْذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ وَعَتَصِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيًّا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا Hold fast to the rope of Allah altogether and do not separate. The other Quranic mention of the root I want to mention, Fataya, also occurs in Surah Al Kahf. Uh, when Allah Ta'ala says, إِذْ قَالَ مُوسَى لِفَتَاهُ لَا أَبْرَهَا حَتَّى أَبْلُغُ الْمَجْمَعَ الْبَحْرَيْنِ أَوْ أَمْدِيَ حُقُوبًا when, when, when Musa said to his servant, I will not give up until I reach the meeting place of the two seas, even if I must spend a very long time doing it. Here the word uh, used is fatahu, translated as his servant. As, as Sheikh Abul Qadr points out, pointed out in an illuminating discourse he gave on Futua, this final reference reveals the highest aspiration and the goal of the people of Futua. They will not be satisfied until they reach the meeting of the two seas, the joining of the place of the the joining place of the haqiqa and the sharia. In other words, until they achieve direct knowledge, direct experiential knowledge of the Lord of Existence, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. These are direct linguistic references to futuwa in the Quran. But all the many occasions when Allah Ta'ala talks about the qualities of character which define the Muminun have a direct bearing on this matter. One passage which is particularly <coughs> relevant to this is the advice which Luqman gives to his son. He first warns him strongly against committing shirk, against allowing anything whatsoever to come between him and the worship of Allah. Then there is a passage instructing us all to always behave correctly and courteously towards our parents and to obey them provided they do not attempt to prevent us worshipping Allah and counselling us to take as a guide someone who has turned to Allah, meaning a sheikh of instruction. May Allah ta'ala keep. Take us to their company and keep, keep, it, keep us in their company. Mm -hmm. Lukman then continues. My son... Even if something weighs as little as a mustard seed as in, as in it, and is inside a rock or anywhere else in the heavens or earth, Allah will bring it out. Allah is all-pervading, all-aware. My son, establish salat and command what is right and forbid what is wrong. 
and be steadfast in the face of all that happens to you. That is certainly the most resolute course to follow. Do not avert your face from people out of haughtiness. And do not strut about arrogantly <coughs> on the earth. Allah does not love anyone who is vain and boastful. Be moderate in your tread and lower your voice. The most hateful of voices is the donkey's bray. This whole passage in which Luqman explicitly transmit to his son characteristics essential to his entering into the path of Futua add a further dimension to our understanding of what Futua is. It is in the deepest sense of the word education. In his discourse on Futua, Sheikh Abu Qadr made it clear that it is about young people being placed in a teaching situation where they gain true, useful knowledge, which is relevant and necessary to a successful life in both this world and the next. The word educate comes from a Latin word meaning to lead or bring out. And there is no doubt that futua is a process through which certain characteristics are brought out of people who enter into it. This is what true education really is. Education is now basically considered to involve nothing more than the acquisition of information to be later regurgitated under exam conditions, which then, if you are lucky, results in a series of certificates and qualifications of various kinds. So in the end, modern education ends up by being nothing more than a few bits of paper. Thomas Arnold, the great 19th century English educationalist and headmaster, would be appalled to discover what had happened to the system of education he had helped set into motion. <coughs> His own understanding of education was very different and far nearer to the Futua we are thinking about. He said, if when they leave school my boys have four things, I consider as I have done my duty by them. Those things are piety, Taqwa, loyalty, courage, and generosity. Piety, loyalty, courage, and generosity. No, education is not about pieces of paper. It is about the transformation of all the individuals <coughs> concerned, about equipping them with the discrimination, good character, and useful knowledge, and behavior pattern they need to see them safely through the rest of their lives and beyond that into the next world. This is what Futua is all about. These Quranic sources we've been looking at form the basis of what became formalized over time as the science of Futua. Taking examples from the life of the Prophet وسلم, and the companions عنهم, عنهم أجمعين, and the early Muslims, over the centuries, a code of behavior outlining the principles of Futua was drawn up, which probably reached its highest expression in the Kitab al-Futuwa of the great Alim and Sufi, Imam Sulami, we look, whose collection of 40 hadith about Tasawwuf we looked at last night. Oh, yeah. 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 There's the book. In this book, he describes a series of qualities possessed by the people of Futuwa. Here are some of them. Right, these are, the, these are some of the qualities which are possessed by the people of the tour. May Allah Ta'ala bring them out of us and, and let, us, let, us, let us express them into our, in our lives. They bring joy to the lives of their companions and meet their needs in every way they can. They overlook injustices which they themselves suffer but are resolute in seeking justice for others. They avoid finding fault with their companions and overlook any mistakes they make. They are slow to take offense and are very careful not to cause it. They are rigorous with themselves regarding the practice of their own deen, but are careful not to impose the same rigor on their companions. <coughs> Police yourself not prayer police, rather. They are generous and open-handed. 
They are easygoing with their companions. They permit their companions to use their things as if they were their own. Not an easy one. They are hospitable and invite people to eat with them. They make sure that their friends and neighbors have what they need. They are satisfied with little for themselves, but desire a lot for others. They are always truthful. They keep their word and protect what is entrusted to their safekeeping carefully. They love to share in the joy of their companions. They think little of themselves and their own good actions. <coughs> they seek good company and avoid bad company like the plague. Then. Now we are beginning to build up a more <coughs> complete picture of what Futua is all about. It involves a group of, of people often living in an environment which is more or less inimical to, is, to Islam, hostile to Islam, who desire to protect and strengthen their belief in Allah and to gather together in mutual support so as to be better able to practice their deen and gain the knowledge they will need for their future lives. And they do this in a very particular way. Firstly, they really enjoy one, an one another's company. The second thing is that in their gathering they are more concerned for the well-being of the others than they are for themselves. This means that they are people who have left childhood behind and are well on the way to becoming mature men and women. The child wants to be looked after. The adult, mature man and woman, wants to look after others. In the eyes of infants and children, the whole world only exists to fulfill their needs. Everything revolves around them. They are not really aware of others except as a means to get what they want. There are many people, especially in this time we are in, who never get beyond this stage, who never grow into maturity, who remain infantile in this way throughout their whole lives. And that protect us from it and, and give us concern for others. Futua is in a real sense a bridge between childhood and adulthood and the door to the far greater rewards which result from it. Anyone who's witnessed the anguish and the anger of an infant who has denied what it wants will be aware of the illusory nature of sensory gratification. Similarly, anyone who's actually practiced the act of apparent self-denial involved in putting the needs of others before their own will certainly be aware of the real feeling of sweetness and satisfaction which results from doing that. And what is the alternative? What else is on offer? We all know the answer. This wonderful consumer paradise in which we live, which promises instant self-gratification in every direction. You just need this one extra thing and your life will be complete. For five minutes, that is, until the next absolutely essential requirement for your happiness is thrust in front of you and has you digging in your pocket once more. There is no way to self-fulfillment by this route. I remember one of the muqaddams of Sheikh Muhammad ibn al-Habib once saying to me that untrammeled indulgence of the appetites is like putting wood on a fire. The more you put on, the more furiously the fire burns. And the more you have to put on it to keep it going, and there's no end to that. And the Prophet confirmed this when he said, the fire is surrounded by appetites. This doesn't just mean that people whose lives are devoted to self-gratification will end up with the, in the fire, although they will. It means that this kind of self-indulgence actually has the fire concealed within it and can therefore only lead to anguish and suffering in this world as well. And the opposite is also true. Self-denial leads to the garden and has the garden concealed in, within it. So that those who practice it, believing in Allah, will in this world get a taste of the contentment and delight which await them in the next. And there are some, some ayats in Surah Al-Naziyat which encapsulate this exactly. 
بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم فأما من تغى وآثر الحياة الدنيا فإن الجحيم هي المأوى وأما من خاف مقام ربه ونهى النفس عن الحوى فإن الجنة هي المأوى the meaning of which is as for him who oversteps the bounds and prefers the life of this world the blazing fire will be his refuge but as for him who fears the station of his Lord and forbids the lower self its appetites, the garden will be his refuge. Just in case it has appeared from what I've said that futua is in some way an abstract matter, I want to make it absolutely clear that there is nothing theoretical about it at all. It is not that a group of Muslims get together and study the principles of futua and then somehow put it into practice. No, futua is something which comes about naturally when the right conditions are present to bring it into being. When a group of Muslims gather together in order to protect and strengthen their deen and to live in a way which is more pleasing to Allah, that will automatically result in the practice of futua among them. It is like an alchemical, pre an alchemical process when the necessary ingredients are brought together and the right temperature is achieved, an inevitable transformation occurs. I will take a couple of examples from our own community to illustrate what I mean. In the late 80s, for various reasons, the Muslim school we'd been running in Norwich had had, had to close down, and one of the consequences was that a group of three girls who had been at the school had to go to a local secondary school to continue their education. When they'd been there a year, we decided to send a few more of our young people to the same school. And I went to see the headmaster to discuss with him uh, uh, the possibilities of this. It occurred in the early days of Dallas College, uh, found, which was a, a college uh, founded by Sheikh Abu Qadr for, for, um, for, 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 for teaching Muslim leadership. When the students who'd been studying in Scotland came to continue their studies in the Zawiya in Granada when I was living there. There were about 15 of them and they lived in very cramped circumstances on very limited means for a period of three months or so. In spite of the many difficulties of their situation, I was continually impressed by the harmonious way they lived and studied together during the whole of that time. I can honestly say that at one time or another during that period, I saw every one of those qualities enumerated by Imam Sulemi in his Kitab al Futua demonstrated by members of this group, and on more than one occasion. And there was no sense of it being anything other than the natural way to behave in that situation. I have since spoken to several of them, and all without fail remember that time as one of the best time of, times of their lives. Many of us would have been in similar situations and would have seen how even a short period of real companionship in the way of Allah can bring about a quite dramatic change in the people engaged in it. It is just a question of increasing the opportunities for this to happen and building on them when they do. And the benefits of this kind of futua are so tangible for all concerned that once tasted, very little encouragement is needed for a repeat experience and gradually the group involved will themselves begin to effect a change on the environment in which they live. This is something that the people of this society simply do not have. But at the same time, it is something that many of them are desperately looking for, something to give real meaning to their lives. Sheikh Muhammad al-Habib, rahimahullah ta'ala, may Allah have mercy on him, once said to us in the early days of the community that by becoming Muslims, we now possessed pure gold and that non-Muslims had nothing but base metal in their beings. When they saw what we had and compared it with what they had, they would certainly want it. So when Muslims of this time really do come together for the sake of Allah and put into motion the alchemical process of futua, they will not only have the best possible time themselves, but will also make the pure gold of Islam shine forth in an unmistakable way, so that all those non-Muslims 
with any life in their hearts at all who come into contact with them will say to themselves, I want some of that. And if Allah wills, they will enter, enter Islam themselves. And even more than that, as our Sheikh reminded us, the practice of futuwa is the path that leads to the meeting of the two seas, to that direct experiential knowledge of our Lord, which is at once the purpose and the supreme fulfillment of human existence. May Allah take us on that path and bring us to that glorious goal. <laughs>